Let's look at what the left had planned for 2018, because obviously uh, in 2017 they got their prized uh, reform, uh, which was uh, same-sex marriage. Uh, but now that that's passed, they, they certainly want to move on to uh, other issues. And uh, now that they feel they've got a taste of victory, they certainly feel that they can push further. Yeah, they certainly do. Um, and once they've got that through Parliament, once they've got that in place, then that's it. You know, they're going to start doing what they've done in every other part of the world where this has been brought in. It'll be used as a justification for teaching the, their lifestyle in schools, their ideas in schools and their ideologies in schools. Uh, just the other day in, the Victor in Victoria, uh, one of the groups down there, I forget the name of them, was uh, saying that teaching children about the pleasure of sex should now be part of the sex education program. And they will just keep pushing for the next thing and the next thing. As uh, Roger Scruton said, um, you never know what the next orthodoxy that you're meant to believe is going to be. So they've got their orthodoxy of today, yesterday. Uh, everyone thought that marriage is between a man and a woman. They never thought it'd be different. And then you're told by the state and by the powers that be, no, marriage can be anything you want it to be. And now you have to start believing that and agreeing with that. And tomorrow there'll be another orthodoxy and they'll keep pushing and pushing until they get the type of society system that they want. And it's obviously not just issues related to uh, marriage or uh, LGBTI issues or whatever the, the acronym is uh, uh, these days. Uh, obviously, uh, one of the issues they left continue to uh, rage about is uh, refugees and uh, asylum seekers. Uh, there, there's been a constant protest nearly every uh, weekend to, you know, bring the uh, men on Manus Island uh, uh, to Australia. And to to the government's credit, they've they've stood firm. But it's it's certainly something in the left field that if they can, you know, be as loud and um, uh, obstructive as as possible. And in one of the protests, they they drove a car onto the Flemington Rail Railway track. So they they're clearly, you know, trying to make as much noise as uh, as possible. That's that, that's something that they, uh, you know, would really like to tear down our you know strong uh, border security arrangements. Oh, absolutely! If you get a shortened government, the floodgates will be open. It's probably one of the only points of difference that still exists between the Lib Nats and the Labor Party, and that is what we do with sort of illegal arrivals um, and. The, the people that are pushing for the sort of things you've just been talking about, in their deepest theology, in their deepest philosophical thinking, they don't actually believe in the nation state. They don't think we should have uh, national borders. They think it should be a free-for-all for anybody anywhere, which would be an absolute disaster for any country. Uh, if you don't have borders under control, you don't even have a nation. It's as simple as that. A nation is defined uh, in many aspects by its borders. So if you can have anybody coming in, if you can have free movement of people in and out whenever they feel like it, uh, you're going to start seeing massive social changes. We've already seen the beginnings of that uh, and many other voices around Australia are starting to raise the issues about our immigration levels in general, including Dick Smith, who's back on the scene again, uh, bringing up this issue. And uh, it's, it's very interesting, the point that you bring up, is why, everyone out there has got to ask themselves, why is this so important to the left? Why do they want an open border where just about anybody can come in for almost any reason. And you've got to ask yourself, what exactly is motivating these people that they want to change our nation so fundamentally in this way? Yeah, and uh, another uh, pet cause of uh, the left uh, recently has been to uh, try and abolish Australia Day. And, uh, you know, we certainly hope that uh, Australia Day 20, uh, 2018 is is not the last one. And the, the Greens have arrogantly said that it's not a question of if Australia Day will change, it's when. And basically, even though Australia Day has broad support in the community, if you if you listen to the mainstream media, you'd think that it was the most toxic day on the calendar. Yeah, exactly. A lot of what the mainstream media go on about, uh, sure, there's some people in there that sort of are lefty thinking and have their agenda, particularly on their ABC. Um, but um, half the time they just want a story that has a bit of a controversial line on it. So it tags people in, you know, you know what they're like. Um, 
But again, it's a symbol of the nation state. It's a symbol of who we are. When Australia Day comes along, just like Anzac Day, we think about who we are as a nation, what we constitute as a people, where we're from, what we believe in, and where we're going. And so all the symbols of the nation state, just like all the symbols of the family, must be torn down. Uh, it is a tenet of cultural Marxism uh, that you do this. Um, and again, everybody out there listening to this, you've got to think to yourself, why are these people so obsessed uh, against Australia Day? And don't tell me it's because some Aboriginal people may be offended. That's a complete nonsense. You'll find it hard-pressed to find many people that think that way in any group in Australia. Most people in Australia love their country. They love what it stands for. And it's only these agitators uh, that are constantly carrying on and bullying, trying to bully the population into sort of agreeing with them. And, and of course, our, our major parties are still full steam ahead with uh, renewable energy. There has been uh, some resistance in the in, in the coalition. The, 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 but the language they use is that we need the you know right uh, energy mix. That well, you know, where we we still believe in climate change, and you know, we like uh, renewable energy, but uh, we we just need a more uh, soft approach, and you know, we're still committed to our you know international uh, cl climate agreements, and and certainly. Uh, climate change is still one of the, uh, not just the sacred cows of the left, but sacred cows of politics, where uh, no, uh, hardly any politicians dare um, speak, out, uh, speak out against it and say, hey, this is mad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you wanted to destroy an industrialised economy, you would skyrocket the price of energy. And that's exactly what the net effect is going to be. And I've written about this quite a lot in the past, and I touch it on my latest article, that uh, when you introduce these renewable energy targets, uh, what happens there is you basically mandate that any time the uh, renewable energy is being produced, or I call it intermittent energy, is being produced, that must be given priority, it must be taken, and it must be used. But it can't do it all the time, and you have to have all the backup systems. So when you have this sort of hybrid system going on, uh, you basically skyrocket the costs of renewable energy. And you've seen this in South Australia, who's like the most far down this death trap of power pricing on the planet. Uh, the prices there will make you, your hair raise. It's just uh, terrible. Here in Queensland, now we've got Labor Party back for another four years, if we can't do something about it, uh, they are going to introduce a zero emissions target by 2050. Now, what that's going to mean is is they're going to start implementing all their uh, renewable energy policies and we're going to start seeing the price of power skyrocket here like in other states and like they're seeing in Victoria. And I will prophesy to you now that within two years you'll see power prices double and within five years you'll probably see them triple uh, in the areas of Australia where they do this. And remember, the whole sort of electrical grid is interconnected around the country. One area is relying on another. So, you know, whatever one person does like in Victoria, it starts having an effect on all the other states as well. And uh, another thing that the left have shown they, they don't like uh, very much is free speech. Uh, we still have uh, 18C at a federal level, despite uh, uh, the coalition at least trying to uh, reform it. And in my home state of Victoria, we have the Racial and Religious Tolerance Act, uh, uh, which uh, should be known as the blasphemy law. Uh, and of course, the, the 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 left always want more restrictions on free speech. You know, under the guise of you know anti discrimination laws, uh, anti vilification laws. You know, because uh, they say they say, oh, we're in favour of free speech. Where we we just don't want hate speech. Which what is hate speech? Yeah, it's whatever they want it to be at any given time. All those laws are just what you would call shut up laws. Okay, the idea there is uh, if you can stop people speaking, you can stop them persuading, and then the only voices that people will hear are the voices they want them to hear. The only arguments they'll hear is the arguments they want them sell, they want the people to hear. They, they, they can stop the opposition through any means possible, and this is just simply one of the tactics. Uh, just the other day, Someone for the alternative for Germany has been um, uh, charged by the police again with with a hate crime for saying something that they don't want them to say, and that's the end result of this. That's that's all they're interested in is stopping the alternative argument, and they want you to feel like you you don't have the right to speak, that you don't have the right to say these things. And then once you can't say things, once you can't speak, 
uh, you start to change your thinking as well. There's a big connection between thought and speech, uh, which is why it's the cornerstone of all liberty. If you can stop people from speaking, you then stop to start to curtail their thinking process and you start to bully them into submission. And it's part of their strategy. And that must be strongly resisted of all the things we could possibly discuss. That freedom to speak uh, must be maintained. And we certainly can't rely on anybody in power at the moment to sort of do that for us. And of course, the uh, Australian budget is still in a deficit. The uh, national debt uh, is approaching, I believe, nearly six hundred billion. Uh, when the Abbott government was first elected, they said, "You know, we want to address, you know, this as they called it, budget emergency." Now, the position of the Turnbull government is, "You know, what? You know, budget emergency? Oh, you know, we we will, you know, reach a surplus by twenty 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 one." But you now, I remember when, uh, you know, Julie. Gillard said that the, uh, Labor would reach a surplus by 2012-13. Uh, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, but there just doesn't seem to be any appetite to you know, rein in spending significantly. No, there isn't. Um, I remember the hilarious words Wayne Swan said, these years of surplus I announced now when he brought in one of his budgets. Um, and that's the tactic they always use. Oh, look, we'll fix it in the future. Oh, look, yeah, yeah, okay, it's getting a bit bad now, but, you know, we're all going to fix it in tomorrow, next year, and then when next year comes along, they try and misdirect you to next year and the year after that. Uh, one of the points of difference between the Coalition and Labor used to be um, uh, responsible economic management. And even that's ground they seem to have conceded in the last budget. Uh, maybe they've decided it's not worth it anymore because as soon as we get the budget in, in repair... Labor gets in and wrecks it all again and goes spending like a drunken sailor. So, um, and it, even in the Queensland election we just recently had, we were in a massive amount of debt. It skyrocketed. It was the same under the Newman government. It's been the same under the Labor government. At the last election, they just it was it was almost an untouched subject. It's like it's, they're not even bringing it up in elections anymore. It's, it's like you could be forgiven for thinking the two parties had agreed, let's just keep spending... Uh, like there's no tomorrow and let's just not raise it again with the electric because if both of them are doing it, the population's got nowhere else to go, at least at the moment. And of course, the the one thing the the left like doing uh, probably more than other is uh, getting offended. There's there, there's always a, anything you say, even you know something quite innocuous. It, it can be interpreted as you know offensive to the you know oppressed groups, and this is not not even directly related to you know laws against free speech as a social phenomenon that you know so, as some, as some public figure can be you know forced into you know an apology because they you know they made some type ty type of a joke or uh you know they they wrote you know something which is factual but uh, of course even facts can be offensive exactly yeah uh, you're going to find in 2018 and beyond, it's, it's going to be an offendees market. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be wholesale offended. So if, if you don't like something, all you've got to do is claim I'm offended, uh, bring a bit of social media storm, uh, get your favourite journalist to sort of hound people down the street and say, oh, look, somebody's upset. And again, it's another method of curtailing uh, free speech. And again, offence is subjective. Uh, and the other thing you don't find is they don't go around asking what I'm offended about. I'm offended that you're wasting my money. I'm offended that you're trying to change uh, our society and you're trying to change the use of language. If you wanted to, you could all go around to everyone being offended. There's nobody on planet Earth that could not be offended. Uh, where does it stop? Uh, and we just need to stand against that and say, look, buddy, it's time to grow up. Snowflakeism has had its day. It's come and gone. If you want to debate us, find a better tactic because uh, we're not going to listen to this anymore. Now, the Australian voters will have uh, some recourse against the politicians this year. We've got... Uh... This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.